Uh, well, welcome everyone. Howdy folks. Welcome to Coffee and Tools. But tonight we're doing a very special episode that is related to UFOs. Uh, seems like that's become quite a major item in the news these days. In fact, uh, the Comet uh, TV series uh, show channel Comet is having uh, UFO Friday or something. So they're going to be running UFO television shows all day Friday. I hope I get the chance to watch some of that. I've, I've always enjoyed it, but my whole uh, situation here is I had an event back in 1981, and it's it's a very difficult story to explain because uh, the details and the process of what happened uh, has always led me to question myself as to what uh, happened. You know. So we're going to start. Uh, I worked at a place for a couple of years, and I, so I think it was into my, my third year of working for them as a maintenance electrician for a foundry. Uh, the foundry is located in Hamilton, Ontario, in Canada, and I lived about a well, just less, less than an hour away from the plant out in the countryside near Cayuga, Ontario, and I would travel to work every day, steady days, you know, 7 to 3.30 kind of thing. Uh, week to week and so this was a routine and I was about two and a half years into it. It was 1981 and it was the fall of 1981 so there was something very typical of that Canadian weather area. Uh, you had this sort of high uh, fog sometimes so I won't just take that into account. Uh, I was traveling northbound on Highway 56 uh, that morning and it was just a little after six o'clock in the morning which it always had to be. I left at about five minutes after six every morning Monday through Friday well including Saturdays because I had to work a lot of weekends sometimes and I would always uh, be on that that time frequency to be make sure that when I reached uh, General Steelwares which was the company I was working for at the time known as GSW I would punch that clock about three minutes to seven <laughs> somewhere in, in that range and I was consistent I mean like I say for over two and a half years so it's all routine so I'm driving up the highway northbound out of highway 56 I had just passed an area called uh, I believe they call it Nell's Corners it's there's really nothing there's a gas station and a little hardware store that's it that's the whole Nell's Corners and I was about a mile out past that uh, still heading northbound towards the city and Notice these orange lights. They were uh, surrounded by fog, which are, which is why I was talking about the fog earlier, because it it was like a high ceiling fog, that possibly. But these orange glows were very uh, oval looking, and each one was on the side of the highway near the tree line. So near the tree line, about a hundred feet in the air on both sides, seemed to be these these two orange lights, and they weren't centered to the highway. They were centered to where the tree lines are. So it seemed like they had put lights up during the night from you know uh, the electric company which I thought you know not possible but like very strange and very large sort of you know orange lights uh, just glowing and there was no real um, they were like blurry you know to even look at you couldn't really see what they were supposed to be and there was some fog around them what appeared to be fog and I was within maybe not even a half a mile and all of a sudden the radio in my truck cut out. This is a Dodge truck, 1978, uh, only a couple of years old, not even probably 50,000 miles on it yet. And the radio cuts out and I lost the signal. And then all the lights in the truck cut out as well. The whole truck shut off. It, it was so I just rolled. I, I was like doing 60 miles an hour so I was like well I'll let the truck roll as far as it'll go and I thought maybe I'll get up underneath these lights I can open the hood see if the fan belt fell off. I was kind of angry thinking you know the truck's only a couple of years old and I'm breaking down on the highway you know at this time of the morning and I was going to be late for work. And so at that point that I rolled the truck to a stop, shut the radio off, turned the key off on the ignition which was pointless obviously the truck's not running it's dead and push the transmission which was automatic into neutral just allow it to roll just that much a little bit more trying to get you know to somewhere where there's some light maybe I can see I didn't have a flashlight or anything with me but as I stopped the truck and came to a complete stop a white saucer shaped light 
in my rear view mirror came flying up from the southern part of behind me from the highway and came up in between the two orange lights. At that point, this white light just simply vanished between these two orange lights. And the orange lights or glow, whatever they were in the sky, they were just, they went off immediately, gone. I was in total darkness and it was like a nanosecond. And then suddenly I'm like, open my, you know, I'm opening my eyes or something and I'm now inches over in my seat where I normally don't sit off the steering wheel a little bit to one side where I would never normally sit. And I thought, that's really strange, what happened? I reached down, started the truck up, it started immediately, lights came on, my radio works, everything's normal, pulled into the highway and went on down the road. Uh, my next stop was in a place called Bimbrook, uh, Ontario. There's a little store, there, a little convenience store, and I would stop every morning and see the owner, Bob, nice gentleman at the time, who operated the store. And I would see him and I would, you know, grab a coffee, and then head for work. I stopped that morning as I walked in I said man you know wow Bob man you won't believe uh, what, what happened and he just basically put his hand up and said I've already had like three cars in here this morning uh, from different areas of the countryside out there uh, telling me about flying saucers and and ignition on their cars quitting things like that he says if you want to tell me about this UFO thing he says I'm going to get in my car and drive down there and see what's going on. And I said, I, I, I think whatever it is is over with. I think they just left. I said, I think I saw them leaving, you know. And uh, so Bob and I discussed it a little bit and I told him, you know, maybe that evening I would ask him some more questions about what happened if he heard anything more that day. But I had to get to work. My whole thought is, you know, I have to stay on this timeline or I won't be able to punch that clock about three minutes to seven so so I can be on, on duty and on my station at seven o'clock. So uh, with that thought I uh, found out about the three other uh, instant uh, witnesses that have also reported seeing something so I drove to work and it doesn't stop there. I got to work and I went to punch the clock. It's now approximately 6 30 in the morning and that's 27 minutes early. Of course, I am, was shocked. I, I just like looked at that and thought, this is impossible. My alarm clock goes off at 5.50. I take about 15 minutes to get you know, a quick shower, brush my teeth, grab some work clothes, run to my pickup truck, and head on up the highway. There is no way I can be here at 6.30 in the morning uh, because of the routine, the, the clock, everything. So anyways, this sort of threw a whole new uh, extra screw into my day. So at the, at the end of the day, uh, I proceeded with a thought of, well, I'll backtrack myself and I'll stop at the store, talk to Bob, and see if he heard anything more or he had anything more to say about it. Uh, on my way home that night, I stopped. Bob was very irritated and he did not want to discuss it. So I thought that was strange, but it was like, uh, Obviously something's wrong or went wrong, don't know. So I left the store and headed to the house. Now, I had a girlfriend at that time living with me, so I thought, well, I'll ask her about the alarm clock because she'll know. She, she, will, she will complain if, the, if something went wrong with that alarm clock because I shut it off when I get up and she sleeps in. So if I didn't shut it off and the clock didn't go off or I left before the clock went off or something, yeah, uh, there would be... There would be some uh, anger issues, whatever, with her. But anyways, uh, so I proceeded down the highway and went to the area where I had seen these orange lights. And I got kind of a little bit of the hair stood up on my neck thing because I looked around and I was like, there's nothing here. There's the trees, there's an old farmhouse off to one side and things, but everything is the way it always has been. And there's nothing new here. So what were those orange lights? Hmm. So I proceeded on to the, my, my house. When I got to the house, I asked the girlfriend about the alarm clock. She said, looked at me like I was crazy, like, no, it went off like it always does. You shut it off. You changed. You, went, you left for work. She said, why? What's the problem? I said, well, you know it takes me almost an hour to get to, an hour to, get to work. And I says, I got to work in, I guess, less than about maybe 25 minutes or less. And I said, I was 27 minutes early, ahead of my own time schedule. Impossible truck stopped. It never did that again, by the way. Also never sunny orange lights again too, but 
I said there was just too many things that morning that happened to be a coincidence or just so happened to happen, you know, occur. So I, I, I tried to take it all apart. And uh, after talking to Bob later on when he was calmer about the witnesses and seeing the flying uh, white disc objects flying around, apparently they appeared maybe an hour or two before that, flew around the area, God knows what they were looking for, went back to these two orange marker lights or beacons and went through something and went back to wherever they came from. Yeah, they didn't come from a, a, a star billions of miles from here, all right? Yeah, they, whatever they did to get here and to leave here was on planet Earth. Yeah, they did that here. They didn't do that somewhere else. Anyways, uh, basically that's the whole story. And I registered it with uh, MUFON. At that time, I think I wrote a letter or wrote into them because uh, there was no internet back in 1981. And I started looking around. There's a few cases out there that are similar. Uh, and similar time instance situations where people have found themselves a half hour ahead or an hour ahead of themselves. There's been a few, not many, but I thought this was a rare case uh, for myself, obviously, but it was a rare case that I've heard of because I've had a lot of trouble with UFO sightings and that really got my interest boiled up to, okay, there's something more around us, something more going on, something we're not seeing. Uh, and of course, recently this past month, the Pentagon has been releasing some information. It sounds like uh, they need more money to investigate is what it really comes down to. They just want more money and what else is new, right? And uh, I really expected that's about what the bottom line would be. And the other thing that uh, the other channel, I'll put this on the other channel as well for the, I guess, episode one. And that, that channel, UFOs, the technology, we'll discuss that on the other channel. The hardcore of Coffee and Tools is just the relaxed projects of whatever's going on in the garage that day. So we will sort of stick with that format. Um, if you were looking for a project, wood project today, I'm, I apologize. I'm sorry, guys, but you know we had to get I had to get this UFO thing off my my chest because uh, it is what really caused me to be more concerned, but more interested in other people's sightings and what happened and you know that sort of thing so uh, I took a lot of time studying a lot of cases and also sat down with uh, various people that had reports and I went over their uh, reports with them and took you know some deep look into uh, what may or may not have been the situation there's a lot of uh, interesting theories that can come out of a lot of that stuff so hey I'll cut it off and we'll say we'll go back to normal coffee and tools after this episode. I will leave this posted with coffee and tools even though it will be on both channels. UFO Tech is the other channel and of course coffee and tools is my baby. Hey, you know. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, stopping in this evening and, and listening to my story. My little rant and rave about what the heck happened. And uh, we will see you in the coming weeks with other inventions, projects, 3D printing, wood prop, whatever I'm working on. We'll do it. All right. Adios, guys.